Welcome back, friends and neighbors. Hey, hey. Part six uh, of the saga of the John Beanland custom built rifle in seven Remington short action ultra mag. Ain't that a mouthful? <laughs> hey, just about anything I've got. Well, never mind. Um, came out here today on a wonderful, beautiful day with about two miles an hour wind. It's gorgeous out here. And so we've got that number three load that we fired on the test trials in the last video. And we are going to retest this load and see just how good it really does. Now we have moved back twice the distance. We're sitting here at about 150 yards. And to really, really, really center down and test this load's accuracy and see what we get, yes, I have brought out my lead sled, so don't accuse me of cheating because this is about measuring accuracy for a group. It's not how good a shooter I am, it's how good a shooter the ammo and the gun is, all right? You can get this puppy nailed down, put a string on it and shoot fine groups and never touch it. So we're gonna take that load. I've got 20 rounds of it. I'm gonna shoot five rounds on the left target and this is basically for zero verification and group performance. We've got a target on the right side of that piece of paper next to it that I'm going to make my adjustments just so I'm good and centered on the rifle if it's necessary. And then I'm going to fire another group and make sure that she's still doing good and going where I want her to go, the way I want her to go. And uh, then... We're going to come back up here, set the camera up here, and we're going to hook up the chronograph, that Magneto V Speed uh, Chrono Bayonet. I love that puppy. Going to put that on the banner here, and we're going to run about six or seven more rounds through it just to get a good average muzzle velocity, SD, ES. Kind of check the load out, see what it's doing by those parameters. And if everything looks good to me, like I'm hoping it will, I'm just going to anneal these 50 cases and make them pretty and get the sizing done. Build 50 more of these puppies and put them in a box and call that good. <sighs> and later on down the road when I can find some more brass... <laughs> Maybe five years from now, God who knows. Um, I'll do some more testing on some different bullets. But for right now, I got 400 of these 162 ELDs, and they so far seem to be performing fairly nicely, and I can't think of anything that really stands much of a chance of surviving a hit from it, whether it be a steel plate, a deer, a hog, a coyote. So here we go. Beautiful central Oklahoma day. Uh, let's get out there and see what this wonderful little rifle can do. Stay tuned. I'm going to give you a shot or two.
Breathe deep, Brad. <laughs> Breathe deep. We no sooner got through shooting for group confirmation and a little bit of zero tune in and the wind done come up seven knots. <laughs> I love it when a plane comes together. I just hate it when it all has to start at 4.15 in the morning. <laughs> Oh well, that's Oklahoma. Hey guys, uh, I haven't been down there to Target yet, but I can see it through my scope. And I'm thinking I am well, going to be most pleasantly satisfied with the groups. I can't wait to see them. <laughs> I want to sneak down there, but I want to get it all done in one spot because I've got to go do some other things. Pick up my dad, grab him, grab a rifle at the house, come back out, look around for some coyotes and some pigs. So, we have one final testing procedure to handle today. And that's going to be chronographing a few rounds, see what kind of <clears throat> data we get. So, without further ado, we've got this puppy set and ready. We're going to go ahead and hook it up. I'm going to pan that camera around so we can get a, a nice little... Nice little view of the screen, and uh, you can see the data as it's happening. We'll get those rounds fired, and then we'll go down there and look at that target board and get all happy skippy. <laughs> all right, give me a second. Be right back. Oh, and I want to put my ear plugs in. Twenty nine, twenty nine. Oh, I like that number. I like the number twenty nine, twenty nine. That's a good number. I've had <clears throat> several nice loads in different rifles that just love twenty nine, twenty nine.
29.17. That's not bad. Twenty-nine, twenty-five. And twenty twenty-nine forty-eight. <laughs> I don't know where that come from. Oh well. Cool. Now, I will tell you folks something. While I've got you here and while I have the results printed on my target, when you put a magneto speed V3 or magneto speed bayonet period on the end of your weapon, your group point of impact is more than likely going to shift and it's more than likely going to open up. It might close down, but it's going to change. So if you've got your weapon sighted in and you put this on there and you shoot at a target and your group goes somewhere else and you think you've got an issue, stop thinking that. You've got something else hanging on your gun that wasn't there when you sighted it in. Okay? But hey, what do we got here? 13.1. Average muzzle speed, 29, 29. Standard deviation, 13. I might be able to fine-tune that a little bit, but hell, that's not a problem. <sighs> this video brought to you by my favorite soda pop, and I can't tell you the name because they ain't paid me yet. Um, hey folks, welcome back. As you might have been able to tell and determine by my demeanor, <laughs> <laughs> the big old acrimony and grin on my face and all the smiles and fun I've been having. Had a hell of a fun day with my new favorite girl again. I'm telling you folks, every time I take her out to the woods, mm, we have a great time. As you saw on the video, we stretched her out twice the distance of our initial test firing. And groups stayed basically the same. They opened up by less than 30% of the data turned in the, on the test before. There's no reason to call that load anything but a damn fine pet load, and that's exactly what I intend to do. So, it's already gone down the book. <clears throat> 162 grain pet load. We get the recipe down. Going to move on to the next one later on. Right now, still got to look for cases. But if you'll notice in the video when I was firing those groups, mm, I will say this, I had two flyers. I'm not going to make excuses. That was my fault. It was on me. And it's very frustrating. It's aggravating. Um, but, you know, what can you do about it? It's all part of the game. Uh, you can't be perfect all the time. Hell, start thinking you're a god. I call this my little girl, but she ain't. She's a 15 pounder. She's a honey hoss, I guarantee you. Um, took dad out riding around looking for a hog or a coat. We didn't find any, but I stopped by my 350 yard shooting station and let him 
send one into that steel plate. Now he's 90 years old. First round. Score. And I turned around and dumped a couple into it just because I had three rounds left. So now they're all gone. And going to get the case polished up. Going to get them resized. Going to get them annealed. And get them peeled, powdered, stuffed, and puffed and put them in the box. Going to have some play rounds now. There's really only one thing left to do. And then we're basically at the end of this little series. And that's to get those rounds loaded. Take that chronograph information. Plug it into the data ballistic calculator. Yeah, yeah. Get my range table. Get my data card, my dope card set up. And we're going to take a plate out there and hang it at 1,000 yards. And we're going to see, do she like to ring steel at a thousand yards? And I bet you a, a rough old crumpled up dollar bill to a brand new fresh horse turd, she does. I bet she does. I think it's going to be fun. So that's going to be episode seven, yeah. And it'll be the final episode, and it's probably a week or so down the road. Good Lord willing and the creek don't rise and get out there and get everything set up. I can't wait to do that. That's what it's all been headed for is hanging that thousand yard plate, seeing what this puppy will do. Well, I'm glad you guys have been sticking with me if you have and if you haven't, well, you, you aren't here. Thanks for stopping by. Thanks for watching the series. I hope you got a little fun out of it. I hope you learned a little something out of it. If nothing else, I hope you learned that John Beanland builds one hell of a fine rifle. And if you ever decide that you are in the market for a custom-built gun, he's the guy you ought to call. Straight up. All right, folks. Y'all have a great night. Have a better day tomorrow. And hopefully... We'll see you on the 1,000-yard line about six or seven days from now. Y'all have a great night. Thanks for stopping by. Have a good one. From me and my baby. <laughs> oh, she smells good. Y'all have a great night. Love you. Pass it on. Bye.